So it's Justin with Imps and Monsters, and behind the camera again is Marcus of Lasting Impression Art. And I'm we're making our way to Michael's right now. We used to have a really good art supply store uh, that was local. It was, it was a great business. The lady who owned it was awesome. Uh, but it went out of business, and so now we have a Michael's that's relatively close. I usually order my my supplies online, but. I'm teaching a little class on Thursday, so we're just gonna hop over and uh, get some of the items that I need. So let's go. All right, so we're inside of Michael's. I'm just looking for some paint, some paint brushes, and some other things that I have. They they don't have the brand that I usually use, but that's okay because I just need some stuff for my class. Um, and so let's see here. I'm gonna grab some brushes. My the, my favorite brushes are the flat brushes. Um, I use a lot of these, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of those. And um, let's see here for colors. They have they have them set up by best value. And, I think they have, oh, and they have the artist, the artist grade and then the professional. The, with paints, you should always, you really should always buy the best you can afford. Um, uh, or you, you, you buy, you, you buy the best that you can afford that you won't be afraid to actually use it. Yeah, so for my class, I'm going to grab some of these Windsor Newton ones. I mean, they're on sale, so. I'm just going to grab some basic colors. I've actually never used Winsor Newton. I usually use uh, M. Graham is the brand I usually use. I like the consistency of, of that. So, all right, get a handful of these and then I'll see what's next. We braved Michaels and made it out. Um, the line wasn't too bad and uh, everyone there was super friendly so um, michael's not it's a store that has art supplies it's definitely not an art store but i did find pretty much what i needed for my class uh, the there was a couple colors I, I i really wanted the raw sienna i i used raw sienna to, to do the underpainting on all my my paintings and in my class i have them do the same thing and I, all I could find was a little, a little tiny uh, tube of that, so that was kind of a bummer, but that's all right. I got a bunch of cheap brushes that were the exact size I needed, and so all in all, it was a, uh, it was a good trip, I think. All right, so we're back, and I have my, my paint I just got. Uh, and some of some paints I already had in my studio. Uh, the brand that I normally use is M. Graham. Um, I've been using that since almost uh, 12 years ago when I started painting again. And uh, basically, I guess when we're talking about acrylic paints, acrylic paints are uh, boiling it down to its simplest. Um, it's, there's two parts. So you've got the binder, which is uh, it's polymer-based. It's basically plastic. That's why it's called acrylics. And then you've got the... Um, the uh, what is it called? Pigment. Pigment. You've got the pigment in there. Um, and so you've got less expensive paints that use less pigment uh, with the binder, and you've got the more expensive paints that use more pigment. So you really are getting more, you're getting what you, what you pay for. Uh, if you pay more for paints, you're usually getting a nicer paint that has more pigment in it. Um, so we're actually going to, test out these different paints and see how they how they uh, compare uh, starting with this really cheap student grade paint and with with paints like with acrylics you really should just buy what you can afford the better the paint that you can get the the, the better the experience you'll have with painting but uh, you can see here if I run that over the black 
you can still see the black through it. I, I chose white because white is supposed to be a really opaque color anyway when you're using paints. Some, some colors are more opaque than others, but white should be opaque. <clears throat> so that was our basically cheap, almost a uh, well, student or kid's paint, really. This is a studio acrylic from Blick. Uh, I buy a lot of my art supplies from dickblick.com. So you can see just coming out of the tube there, it's a little thicker. I'm going to grab some of that and pull it across. And you can already see there's a pretty big difference even just between those two, even though both of these are uh, student grade, really. Uh, these are this is much better Get my brush clean again all right so these this Win Windsor and Newton I've never used I obviously I've used Windsor and Newton brand things before like uh, uh, brushes and watercolors and all that but I've never used Windsor and Newton acrylic paints before so we will try those out the other thing that good paints do are they they seem to mix better. They don't get as muddy when you when you mix them, and also the light fastness is better, which means they don't fade as easily in the uh, in the light. Let's see here. I'm having issues with my bristles there, but uh, you can see that that went on way smoother, and it's also a little more opaque as well. And then last, I'll try my my usual brand that I use. <clears throat> now the binder in acrylics, as I mentioned, is, a, is essentially plastic. The binder in oil paints is oils and the that binder in the acrylics can't hold as much pigment as oils can, which is why with oils you get it's even more vibrant. And acrylics you you tend to have to paint in more layers. So it's kind of interesting. All right. So there's my, my uh, M gram. Kind of laid it on a little thicker, but here. Well, that just, um, just looking at them and, and, and laying it down like that. I, I still really like my, my M gram. It, it's uh, they're fairly affordable for what they are, and opaque and smooth, and they and they mix really well. So, all right, so we're on. Oh, hi, <laughs> hi, hi. Hey. So, uh, d we're we're here at Artist Alley at Emerald City Comic Con still. So uh, still. here's here's Mike Micatron. Hi. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you like to do? Yeah, so I think the best way to describe me is like, I'm like Justin Hillgrove, but like <laughs> a rude PG-13, maybe R-rated version of it. Uh, That's fair. <laughs> which is actually a good thing. Uh, a lot of people, because we're, we're in the Seattle area, uh, a lot of times people are like, hey, do you, know, do you know Justin? And I'm like, yeah, he's my nemesis. He's really nice, though. Yeah. Um, so, wacky, uh, I love dinosaurs, uh, but I... My work's a lot about destruction, but also cuteness. So there's that element of like, oh, the unicorn is missing its head, but it's a really cute unicorn. Nice. And uh, so, tell us a little bit about your your setup here. Uh, so it's I've been doing this for I think five or six years now. Mm -hmm. So one of the big things is like I'm actually doing less on my table. Um, which actually people do want to like just see stuff. It was eye level. Um, so I got like the pro panels and I've just got my work tacked up on there. Um, it's like Velcroed on there, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's how I've been doing it. Um, it's pretty easy to set up and take down. So do you have any favorite pieces you have out? Or? Favorite pieces. That's like saying which of my children I like best. Um, of the originals, I think my favorite painting is actually the, the video drum painting, which is right here. If you want to scoot around there, mm. nice. 
uh, just because technically it's the best. I don't think it'll ever sell, um, <laughs> but it's I, I like it. Is, is that the original? Yeah, this is the original. Oh, nice. And then what, what medium do you usually use? I usually use acrylic, uh, but I'm training myself more towards digital just because okay. I don't have to clean up and take down. Yeah. It's faster. Um, uh, but I'm doing more right now. The thing that I'm actually uh, that I really like doing is I actually like making things. So buttons, enamel pins, like working with like different, uh, you know, like, oh, this is gold. OK, sweet. Right. It's got glitter on it. It's glow in the dark. Like, <laughs> well, th- there's it, something very satisfying. Yeah. I found of, of, like even using the button maker, you know, that little chunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, even. Even a lot of people who come back year after year to my table, they're like, hey, uh, either I need to buy a bigger house or I need to get something that's not on my wall. Right. Because I ran out of space. And so I have a lot of people that just, you know, every year they'll come by and they'll be like, I want a thing, but I don't have room. What do you got? So I want to wear it or I want to put it on my body or, you know, I want it to be on my fridge or something like that. Yeah. So. All right, and, well, and what's what sells your uh, best here? What's your best? Um, it's a combination. Uh, like, I've got this is a new print this year, the Ghostbusters one. Um, it's selling pretty well. Link always sells well. Yeah, uh, because that, I, I remember that one because I had I had drawn something really similar. Oh, really? <laughs> to, in my style, there was a little less blood. Of course. Um, but the concept was really similar. I'm like, I- I'm totally going to do this because I love Link. Yeah. And I saw that and I was like, oh, that's really good. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll do something else. Uh, <laughs> yes. There's the one time I've done but, that. Yeah. He got uh, me. Um, <laughs> My nemesis. <laughs> but the enamel pins are really hot this year, too. Yeah. So um, I've had them for, I, I started having them and last these are, year. And these are your enamel pins right here? Yeah. So I've got the. Those look great. I've got the, the unicorn and again. Like I wanted to do things with material, so this guy glows in the dark. The little hipster, the little hipster guy, um, and buttons just sell sell really well. Actually, uh, secretly they're a great way to just get one dollar bills, right? Um, for change. Uh, <laughs> well, and and you know, kids everyone, has a, everyone has a couple bucks. So, yeah, yeah. So people, even if they're not willing to buy a print or a shirt or something like that, they you know they want to take something away just right. to either remember or just be like oh i just want i want a thing yep. and the one dollar is you know not a big consequence for most people um All shirts right. sell really well uh because mm-hmm. swearing dinosaurs yeah well everyone and everyone needs to cover up i guess it's cold so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah hey so um how do people find out more about you how do people find out more about me yeah uh, i am on the social medias the uh book of i'm not in the book of faces anymore yeah. but instagram uh, Facebook, I'm Micatron. Sorry, I said, fa- I said Facebook again. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, I'm Micatron Art. Uh, you can also go to Micatron.com, see my artwork there. Okay. Um, the internet. All right. And then um, what, are, what are the the things that inspire you most, I guess, while you're creating art? Why I'm creating What gets you going? What gets me going? Um, right now, it's like tactility stuff. So, like materials and thinking about, like, I want to do this in gold. Like, uh, I want to. You know, I want to draw a butt or I want to draw a pizza. Things I actually, I'm, I'm actually just a big kid, you know. Yeah. But I've been drawing a lot of pizza for some reason. So yeah. I'm going to make that into a thing. Uh, and I just like laughing. Because if something makes me laugh, um, chances are, like, it'll make a good piece. Especially considering kind of the way I go about thinking about things in life. It's just not common. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then do you have any advice for anyone maybe just starting out or young artists or um, old artists, whatever? <laughs> I think um, the big thing that you don't have to show things to everyone. So you should create things and not necessarily have to think about. That's the thing that I struggle with, which is I don't I'm always thinking about things. How will how will the sell? How will um, you know, will the gallery owners like it? Will people buy it? Um, but there's another side of it. If you're, especially if you're just still, cr- uh, tuning your, your craft, which is make something. If it's not, think about it. If it's not good enough, move on to the next thing. Um, and be nice. That's yeah. the other part too. It's <laughs> like, you, if you're not skilled enough at this time, like you'll get there if you just keep putting in the work. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mike. Appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you would like to support us, please click the link to our blog post below, 
where you can find affiliate links to the products Justin uses. I've also added links to Micatron's social media. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment below. See you next time.